wonderful place years and years ago, boy. That was a show place of corner for the hotel, one of the best hotels there was. So when it was opened up, there was one uh, all velvet car carpet in there, you know, and beds and everything was all nice, and everything was nice there. And he was a uh, older lost warrior there. Uh, like likeable sort of a chap, you could, if you had to be there, you know, to make the customers that come, I'd make them a home life. Portland, even in the early days, was a crossroad for commerce. Its main street consisted more of open fields than open stores. The entire community grew in stature when in 1829, the Cortland House, with its tiered verandas, rose to mark the north end of the village. Its site at the corner formed by Groton and Main was the focus of a wide but prosperous Main Street. The builder was Danforth Merrick, and it was one of the largest public houses in the area. In 1868, after passing through a number of hands, the Cortland House was purchased by Delos Bauder. 1882 saw $19,000 worth of improvements made, including steam heat and gas lamps. One year later, the big fire of 83 reduced the building to a smoldering shell. New construction under the direction of Beers and Warfield, two young architects, began almost immediately. This was to be the Cortland House that we remember best. In 1884, at a cost of $55,000, the Cortland House reopened. Ninety years later, it cost the city $50,000 to level the hotel and surrounding structures. In the years between birth and death, Cortland Hotel played host to salesmen, presidents, performers, the well-to-do, and the down and out. The lives and memories of many Cortland residents are interwoven into this colorful tapestry. Uh, my father was, I see what was father so many things. Father was the mayor of Cortland for a while, and during that time, uh, Roosevelt, the first Roosevelt, came here, Teddy Roosevelt, and uh, in the afternoon. And Cody and I went to a cousin of hers on Railroad Street, it was called, and sat on the baluster of the porch to see him go by, and I was so thrilled to see my father sitting next to the president that I had never got over it. And they paraded down, and they took him to the hotel and did all. And the laser, he went uh, a block. The other end of the block, going toward Groton, was our theater. And he spoke there, because that held the most people in. And uh, all great people stayed there. I worked with wires, and we used to... I'd never any of them thought we could come in there because you're supposed to wear coat and tie in when we come back from work or anything where we didn't want all dressed up to go in. That was the niftiest place in Cortland. <laughs> uh, the first, the first uh, do -si do we call them, little cars that had a seat and a seat you could turn up in the back. Uh, were owned by the Gillette boys, whose father owned the carset factory here. And Cody and I, we were in school together, we used to go ride with him. And we especially liked to ride if anything was going on. Well, during a circus parade one day, we had ridden once or twice in this new affair, 
the boys came after us to go, and Leslie and I sat in the back, dosy dosy, and Harold and Cody sat in the front seat, and we went up through Main Street, with all eyes of all the people from the country, and the <laughs> uh, observing us. But when we got in front of the Carlin house, we ran out of the gasoline or water, whatever it was, and it wouldn't go any farther. And we were so upset. It was such a blow to us. On the second floor, either that or the room above it was the apartment occupied by the owners of the hotel. And it seems to me it was a couple of ladies who owned the hotel. And they reserved that part for themselves because they could see everything going on on Main Street. Out of those windows, they could see the whole length of Main Street. <laughs> That was, their, the that was their personal <laughs> bailiwick right in there. I think back farther on the second floor, toward the alley that went out to the old opera house, was the dining room. That's where Rotary met and Exchange Club met, and, and oh. of course various banquets and things of that kind. The theater was the first building west. That was the Cortland Opera House. Right. I don't know, but I would imagine that the uh, vaudeville troops stayed at the hotel being so close by. All the traveling shows, you know, used to come in there and put up there at the hotel at Cortland House. I one time helped him move in the, before I had the truck and two, he got three, four of us fellas to help him. On a Sunday he moved in, we moved in the trail of Lonesome Pine, all that. It in the next two that is, where Oh, uh, Sears Roebuck was. It used to be the Dillon's picture show, Vaudeville. It was a lovely opera house, we thought. There's only one we knew, just children. And we graduated there, every place we graduated there, and then they had Kermises. And those were very interesting. Uh, I was taken as a child, all dressed these little children and they were rocking back and forth and sang but, and uh, all sorts of things they did. And then we had uh, some very noted singers here. Uh, they, uh, in our own life, we went there quite often for dinners and, and holidays. And uh, one holiday, the whole family were there, and he put us in a different room, a large, large room on the main floor that opened out from the main room that you entered. And the, the table was really too big for our family, which was large. They did hold a good many private funerals there. There are no um, uh, funeral homes in that day and uh, people who had expected a large funeral, churches, they didn't want to go to a church. There was no other place, and they were very lovely to them. They had a funeral on the second floor. individual peaks there above those windows were a rather treacherous thing in the winter time. It was a poor design, really. The ice and snow would accumulate there and then crash down on the sidewalk. Uh -huh. They had to put ropes out in front of the stores and uh, the front of the hotel there to keep people away from the front of the building. Yeah. That stuff because would come down with quite yeah. a crash. You wouldn't know what was going to hit That's you. That's right. Uh, another thing that happened to the hotel happened on my birthday, so I remember the date of it and all. 11th of June, 1922. The cyclone hit Cortland. I remember it that. Struck too. at the upper end of Madison Street, came diagonally across Maple Avenue and Lincoln Avenue, and struck just about the corner where the hotel was. Well, the hotel stood up pretty good, except that the uh, some of the windows of the hotel and the store were drawn out, 
They had blown in. They were drawn right out toward the street. We used to have a lot of those kind of storms. We 600, 600 trees down at that. That's right. Yeah. 600 trees. But the hotel itself suffered that damage of the windows being drawn out at that uh -huh. time. Uh, then the, the, you remember the streetcar that oh, yes. used to yeah. could meet all the trains. That's right. Yeah. And uh, they, they could ride up. Yeah. Where they turned to go to Little York, the yeah. streetcars, mm -hmm. or Homer, Homer, yeah. yeah. And they, they could get out there or get on, you know, and then they, they met all, they met all trains. I've got uh, one of the old timetables when the, all the trains yeah. were in bloom here, yeah. and, and it lists 47, 47 live industries in yeah. Cortland yeah. at that time. It's, uh, I, you go down to the station here, get on a streetcar, you couldn't go down there. Can you imagine that in Cortland and around here now? Uh, there was a cupola on the top of the corner of the hotel, and that was a rather ornate and fancy thing. I think you'll find some old uh, I picture that. postcards of it. I'm not right sure when corner. it was taken down, that cupola. Yeah, right above the corner. Yeah. Uh, whenever that was taken down, my dad was a plumber and a tinsmith, they put a flagpole in place of that, and they put a ball on top of the flagpole. And he had the job of making that ball. It was cut out of flat sheet copper. It was a 14-inch ball. I've heard him tell of it several times. The present had a way of eroding the past, for in 1932, Cortland House became Cortland Hotel. The ornate balcony that fronted on Main Street was replaced with a neon marquee, a concession to the 20th century. Through the war years and early 50s, the hotel relied on its past to sustain its fame, if not its looks. In early 1959, the Cortland Hotel Company filed for bankruptcy and the equipment and furnishings were auctioned off. Six months later, the hotel was purchased and a new owner, Angelo Manicia, announced his plans to create one of the finest hotels in central New York. The kitchen would have the latest equipment. New carpeting is to be installed throughout the main floor. The coffee shop is to be decorated anew and the cocktail lounge will feature a leather finished bar with canopy overhead. The grill room will be renovated and the ballroom will be enlarged and redecorated to service groups as large as 400. All floors are intended to be in use at the time of the opening. 25 of the hotel's 80 rooms will have brand new furnishings. The formal opening gala was held June 4, 1960. As the keystone of the downtown business section, its modernization and reopening represented a much needed stimulus as shopping centers began to drain away local trade. Its new facade was 1960s modern. The amenities graced postcards, hoping to woo clientele into its rooms and restaurants. Its marquee, like the balcony before, marked the entrance to downtown for parades of firemen, dairy princesses, and veterans. Rather than being a cure for a declining central business district, it succumbed itself to the malaise that all cities of this size were experiencing. Over the next 15 years, its prestige, as well as the income of its residents, declined. Its lobby became a Greyhound bus terminal, periodically filled to overflowing with students headed home for the holidays. The neon marquee went out for good April 18, 1975, when the whole block was purchased by the city of Cortland to make room for a hoped-for hotel-motel complex. I'm sorry I missed the last uh, fatal blow here, but uh, uh, what well, happened? Well, I think you missed the best part of the whole operation because uh, the oldest part is usually, usually the dirtiest, and the way we, the method we used to uh, uh, demolish the building was where we prepare the structure in such a way that we're able to collapse the entire structure. When uh, this came down, the dust that was created by the collapse of the structure uh, appeared to be uh, similar to an atom bomb attack.
For five years, the site served as a parking lot for downtown shoppers. For Hotel Cortland, there are only yesterdays.